Hi, this is Echo, or I'm Echo with Echoes of Nature, and today with Chesapeake's Art Center, we are doing an animal and art craft, and this summer we're going to be having our animal and art camp, and today I am sharing with you one of our corn snake ambassadors. Most of our ambassadors come to us from shelters and rescues, and this particular one we've had for several years now. This one is a male. Now you may ask, do corn snakes eat corn? No, but they do get their name corn snake in part because of the Indian maize corn pattern on the back or on their belly. Sometimes kids mention that it looks like piano keys. These snakes are also found in fields like cornfields and meadows and they're actually one of the farmer's helpers because they eat the mice that get into the grain in the barns. Now you may see she's sticking or he's sticking his tongue out. He's not being mean or rude. He's smelling and tasting the chemicals in the air, trying to figure out where he is, what's going on around him. And for corn snakes, their tongue is pink. Some of the other snakes have distinct colors for their tongues, like black rat snakes have black tongues, ball pythons have pink tongues. This individual is a little longer than the ones we would see here in Maryland. Corn snakes are native to Maryland. And if you look along the back, they have the kind of the reddy orange, orange, black, yellow, white. This one is from the pet trade, so it's a little more brightly colored than our native species here in Maryland or in Virginia. The further south you go, the brighter color they have. So if you were in Georgia or Florida, you'd have really bright reds and orange on them. This is a diurnal or daytime snake. One reason I know that is from the eye pupil. It's round. Our nocturnal snakes have cat eye shapes, so like our copperhead and our timber rattlesnake are nocturnal and have that cat eye. But if you can see the eyes, unless you're looking through a glass or a camera like this, you are way too close. And not only will they eat the small rodents, they will eat moles, they'll eat small bird eggs, small birds. These guys can move not super fast, but they move pretty quick across the ground. And they don't do that with any arms or legs. So they use their really strong belly muscles. They have over 200 pair of ribs, and those ribs are attached to the muscles. And these large belly scales help them to grip the ground and to help them to move really well. I like to joke and say they have the ultimate six-pack ab, and they don't work for it. These guys are ectothermic, meaning they are cold-blooded, but that doesn't mean they have cold blood running through them. We have our blood, if we, get, if we get too chilly, what do we do? We shiver. If we get too hot, what does our body do? We sweat. But if you're a corn snake, you can't sweat and you usually don't shiver. So, but if you get too cold, if you're a corn snake, you're gonna move someplace where it's warmer. So in the mornings, they like to sun and get themselves all nice and warm so they can move really well. Because if they're too cool, they're really sluggish and slow moving. If they get too hot, they move someplace where it's cooler so they can cool off. They have a really cool mouth. I want everybody to open your mouth as wide as you can. Now, drop your bottom jaw down to your belly button. We can't do it. We do have a hinge joint that lets us open and close our mouth. They can too. I can't make him do that though. And we can't extend our jaw any wider, but they have special ligaments in their jaws that will let them extend their jaw wider. And they're able to eat food that is twice the size of their head, about where my finger is on this guy. Not counting tail. Tail is like spaghetti. It slurps up. Now think about your chin. Can you take your chin and separate it into two parts? No. But if you were a snake, you could. Because you'd have a ligament there, a rubber band-like ligament that would let you stretch that mouth wide. And your teeth, 
if we grinned the side by side, our teeth would look really different. All of his are pointy, but they're recurved. They curve toward the back of his mouth. So when he grabs his food, it clips into that food so it hangs on and doesn't let go. And when he's eating, he's not a venomous snake. Well, and I don't hold those. And he is a constrictor. But when he constricts, he's not crushing bones. He's suffocating that animal. He's taking, as he wraps around, every time that mouse takes a breath, he's getting a little tighter so the mouse can't breathe anymore, and it cuts off the oxygen to the heart and to the brain. And so then that mouse passes really quickly, faster than what I'm talking about it. And then he's going to be able to eat it. And he eats it whole because he's not going to pull out his knife and fork and cut it in nice dainty pieces. So he's going to open his mouth using that hinge joint and then that extension open that bottom jaw wide and each side of his jaw can move separately and he's gonna walk that mouse in kind of like riding on an escalator and he's gonna swallow that up and depending on the size of the food he eats you might be able to see the lump a little bit younger snakes you can see it uh, the size we this guy actually ate yesterday and you cannot tell that because uh, it wasn't a super, super big meal, but sometimes you can see that lump. And then he only has to eat once a week. Can we eat only once a week? No, and I would not suggest trying it. And we have to eat three times a day at least, and some snacks in the middle sometimes, especially when we're younger because you are still growing. Now he's moving a little bit. A lot of people think that snakes are slimy. He's not slimy, but you can see he looks kind of wet. That's not wet, it's actually nice shiny scales. If you take a look at your fingernails, unless you're wearing fingernail polish, you should see you have nice shiny pink looking fingernails. And our fingernails are shiny not because they're wet, but because we are healthy and our fingernails are made out of the same material as the snake scales, so the protein keratin. Alrighty. So, unless there are any questions that have popped up, okay. So what I'm going to do is put him away for right now, and if you have questions, feel free to put them in, and Miss Sammy, who's holding the camera right now will let me know what those questions are and I'll answer them as best as I can. We have a question. Ooh, I have a from question. From Zoe, age six, and Scotty, age three. Awesome. How long is the snake? This particular snake is about four feet long. Usually the corn snakes we would find in the wild, they're about three, three and a half feet long. So captive red ones are a little bit longer. Thank you for the question. And I do have some craft activities to do, and I'm going to pull some of those over right now and get them closer to me so you can see. Some of the items that you may need will be glue, maybe scissors, something to put your items in. And we're going to, I'm going to show you corn snake, because that's what we brought today. But then I also have some other ideas. And Griffin, if you can come on over, and you're going to go start on your snake so then we can show them. So, and this is my son Griffin, who's also one of our volunteers. The other day for this, we made, or he made, corn snake. So I have a paper plate, a sturdy one. I drew the shape of a snake. You can draw any shape you like. And for this one, I used maize corn. This was from a fall ornament that I just took the corn kernels off and saved for crafts and he made them all around you can also use dried beans I think there's a few dried beans in there too and you can separate the colors into stripes or into different patterns another one we did or actually Griffin did was with um, some stale popcorn kernels that we had. We used cardboard from, um, this one was from a mix box, but it can be from a cereal box that we just cut. And then we used the popcorn and filled in the shapes. 
the two shapes that I have, the two outlines I have will be on the, our website at echoesofnature.org um, a little bit later today. But you can draw your own snake shapes as big as you want or as small as you want. Be creative. Now, you may be going, oh, I don't have maize corn or old popcorn. You can use beans. You can take a look at different snake names and be really creative. So here's a ribbon snake. And I just put ribbon along it. And Griffin, your next color in your rainbow. And... Some other ideas. If you are doing the corn or popcorn, uh, the Elmer's or school glue is going to work best. Uh, the little stick glue will not work for that, but it will work for some of the other items you may use if you use paper or um, the ribbon. Now, there's no such thing as a bead snake, there is a beaded lizard. But you can make a bead snake, and you can do it in any pattern that you like. can also, if you go outside, you may be able to find some acorns. I have some acorn caps. There is a snake called the African rock python. So you could collect some rocks or stones outside and make a rock python. And Griffin is working on a rainbow boa. So doing the different colors, the Roy G. Biv, red, yellow, orange, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And he'll keep working on that a bit. And I will be very interested in seeing what your snakes look like that you've created so you can post those up on the Chesapeake Art Center Facebook under our live video here and we'll all take a look at those and I'm really excited to see what some of your snakes look like and how creative you get with them and you can always post additional questions and I will keep an eye out for those and I'm looking forward to that and looking to forward to seeing you guys next week for, <clears throat> excuse me, for a different craft and a different animal. And thank you so very much. Oh. So you can find the outlines. We'll have them at the echoesofnature.org. And of course, the Chesapeake Arts Center at chesapeakearts.org for information about camps and classes and other fun activities that they are doing for us right now. So I thank you all very, very much. Thank you again for the questions. I hope everybody has enjoyed. Oh, I think I have another question. We want to hear a little bit about camp. Want to hear a little bit about camp. So for us, our camp is the animals and art camp. It's a five-day full-day camp. So for half of the day you would be with one of our instructors um, focusing on the animal and our theme this year is animals around the world. So we're visiting different continents. And then the other half of the day you're going to be with Marianne and doing different art also based on the country that we're focused on that day. One of them will be North America where the corn snake is so you will do something similar to what we did today as well as a couple other things. We're also going to visit Europe, South Africa, excuse me, South America, all of Africa, and Australia. So thank y'all. We're looking forward to that and hoping to see you there. Thanks. <laughs>